everybody and happy Mother's Day um, you know Emmanuel Fellowship has been so blessed with so many wonderful moms and we just want to say thank you thank you thank you and I'm gonna say a little bit more about that a little bit later but first of all I want to apologize we are still having technical issues um, that's the bad news you probably saw some this morning um, there are a couple places where it just kind of go in and out and also Somehow, we're not sure how exactly, but uh, the English portion of this was actually somehow tapped into the worship from last week, not this week, that is into the last song. And so uh, uh, we realize that there's some technical issues. Uh, the good news is that we've been working on a just a, a, a complete different way of kind of doing this. Uh, it's probably going to be next week or even the next week. We have to buy some uh, extra equipment, kind of figure out how to use some software and things like that. But just be assured that we are going to, um, we're aware of all the little difficulties and it's going to be, it's going to be smooth, certainly within two weeks. I say that by faith. Uh, listen, uh, we are going to have a testimony today. And the original idea was that we were going to have the English and the Spanish and it was going to be dubbed over. And uh, unfortunately, one of the technical issues that we, we thought we could bypass that, uh, uh, that, some of the issues, but we found out about 10.30, 10.35 this morning, it wasn't going to work. So basically what we're going to do, we're going to have a testimony of two people, Jorge and Jamie who, as you know, along with several other families, have been battling this uh, COVID-19. And they're just going to share a little bit about what God's been teaching them through this. And But I think what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to kind of show part of it in Spanish, and then we're going to pause it, do English, pause, back and forth. That wasn't our intention. Uh, hopefully next week we'll have that part, you know, figured out uh, for sure. Um, because we feel like we would like to incorporate some more um, um, testimonies. So, anyway, welcome Jorge and Jamie. Bendiciones, hermanos y amigos de Iglesia Emmanuel Fellowship. Mi nombre es Jamie. Blessings, brothers and sisters of Emmanuel Fellowship. My name is Jamie. Mi nombre es Jorge Chávez. Una bendición poder compartir con ustedes. Tenemos a hora y poder eh, dirigirnos a ustedes, hermanos, amén. Eh, para nosotros es un privilegio eh, estos momentos eh, transmitirle a otros o contarles eh, de lo que el Señor ha hecho. Juan, gran. My name is Jorge Chávez and it's a blessing to be able to share with all of you. What a beautiful time to be able to come before you all and it's a privilege for us to have these moments to share with others and tell you what God has done. What great things God has done with us. Excelentes, excelentes cosas que, hermanos, eh, eh, no, ten, no, no faltarían las palabras para, para, para expresarlas. Amen. Excellent, excellent things that we lack the words to express. Amen. Nosotros es, fuimos... Nos dimos el test y salimos positivos en el coronavirus y nuestra familia toda 
salió positiva. We six were tested at positive for coronavirus. Our whole family tested positive. Si sí, toda nuestra familia fue diagnosticada eh, con el coronavirus, eh, sabemos que es algo que está pasando a nivel mundial eh, en muchos países. Eh, nuestros países están siendo arrasados amen, con, este, con este virus. Amen, que, que pues jamás pensamos que podía, eh, podíamos nosotros ser afectados, pero pues salimos afectados eh, de una manera que, que pues, no, no lo pensábamos, pero eh, aquí estamos, aquí estamos dándole gracias al Señor. Yes, our whole family was diagnosed with coronavirus. We know that this is happening on a national level and in a lot of countries. We know our countries are being flattened by this virus. We never think that we are going to be infected, but, well, we were infected somehow. But here we are, here we are giving thanks to the Lord. Eh, no toda nuestra familia eh, fue, fue afectada en este, con este virus. Amén, ya todos están, eh, gracias a Dios, fuera de peligro. Amén, eh, mi esposa, eh, yo, amén. Y en lo personal, eh, el más afectado fui yo. Amén, porque eh, yo padezco la presión. Amén, y debido a eso, pues eh, el virus eh, me agarró como, como, como que no me quería soltar. <risa> Pero su misericordia, misericordia del Señor es, es tan grande que, 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 que pues, eh, ha estado con nosotros siempre. Amén. It was all of our family that was affected, and all of us, thanks to God, are out of danger. Nothing happened to my wife and kids. I was the most affected. I suffered from the virus. But his mercy is so great that he has always been with us. Vale la pena seguir a Jesús, porque sabemos, tenemos la confianza de que él guarda a sus hijos. Yo, en un momento de madrugada, el Señor me da un texto que está en Cantares 2.4, donde dice que su bandera sobre mí es amor. It's worth it to follow Jesus because we know we have confidence and that he guards his children. One moment in the middle of the night, the Lord gave me a verse that is in Song of Solomon 2.4, where it says his banner over me is love. Y es tan hermoso porque yo sentía como él levantaba una bandera en nuestro hogar, donde en lo espiritual podía verse, él podía verse a través de de los que el Señor lo podía ver y que me daba a mí la paz sabiendo que el Señor es, estaba pendiente de nuestro hogar y, y que Él quería hacer y sigue haciendo cosas con nosotros a través de esta circunstancia tan difícil eh, mostrándonos su amor, su misericordia, su compasión que Él, aunque no importa la hora, Él siempre está pendiente de nosotros que el león And it's so beautiful because I felt like he lifted up a banner over our home where in the spirit I could see it. I could see it through from the, that the Lord could see it. And he gave me peace knowing that the Lord was seeing our home and wanted to do and continue to do things with us through these circumstances that were so difficult. He was showing us his love, his mercy, his compassion. It didn't matter what hour, he's always over us. The lion that doesn't sleep. La verdad que el Señor que siempre ha estado con nosotros. Eh, yo creo que desde el primer momento que nosotros salimos eh, diagnosticados positivos, eh, nos dimos cuenta de que pues, pensamos que, que pues, eh, es algo que tal vez que, 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 que el Señor pues, permitió, ¿verdad? Porque la palabra del Señor dice de que todas las cosas que nos pasan nos ayudan a bien. A, a sus hijos, a que están siendo llamados con un propósito. The truth is that the Lord is always with us. I believe that from the first moment we had our test results, we noticed that, or we felt that it's something that maybe that the Lord allowed it because the Word says that all things happen to us to help us for good. To His children, there is a purpose. Como decía mi pastor, mi pastor Mario, que el día Dios tiene un propósito contigo, Jorge. Amén, yo lo creo. Amén, porque eh, créanme que, que pasar por este proceso 
al principio que empezó este proceso, eh, al saber nosotros que estábamos con esta, con esta situación y, y empezar los efectos de, de este virus, también con esta aventura, dolor de cabeza, eh, dolor de cabeza insoportable, saber que tus huesos ya no tienen fuerzas, que tus coyunturas, un dolor inmenso, tus coyunturas, tus pulmones dejan de ser la función al 100%, eh, empezar a vomitar sangre, llegar a llevar, llevar mi esposa, llevarme hasta emergencias. Like my pastor said, God has a purpose for you, Jorge. Amen. I believe it. And passing through this process, I mean, at the beginning of passing through this process, uh, to know that we're in this situation. The virus started affecting us, the fever, intolerable headaches, my bones didn't have any strength in them, immense joint pain, the lungs stopped functioning at 100%. I started vomiting blood, and my wife took me to the emergency room. Lo que jamás pensé que me iba a, a, a afectar de esa magnitud, I mean, al punto de que te das cuenta de que, de que, pues, eh, que no somos nada sin Dios. Mm -hmm. pues no somos nada sin Dios y es ahí donde, donde clamas, clamas. Y como es su palabra, clama a mí y te responderé y te enseñaré cosas grandes y cultas que tú no conoces. Algo de lo sorprendente de todo este proceso es que, que en medio de este desierto que pasamos, porque es un desierto, sabes que solamente el Señor ha estado contigo ahí. En este aislamiento solamente el Señor está contigo. Nadie más. ¿Qué está aquí? I never thought this would come to affect me this much, to the point that I realized that we're nothing without God. We're nothing without God, and this is where you cry. Cry like in His Word. Cry out to me and I will respond to you and show you great and hidden things that you don't know. And something that, well, through all this process, is that in the middle of this desert that we pass through, because it is a desert, you know that the Lord is really with you. In this sorrow, the Lord is with you and no one else. Señor quiere tratar con cada uno de nosotros íntimamente en nuestros lugares, internamente con tu corazón, con nuestro corazón. These are times when the Lord wants to deal with every one of us intimately in our homes, internally within your heart, with our heart. Lo que dice el libro de Oseas, eh, 2.14, dice, Por lo tanto te, lleva, te llevaré al desierto, y ahí dice, te hablaré al corazón. Y yo creo que eh, me llenaba ese versículo un día antes de que yo empezara a tener los defectos de, de todo este virus. Eh, el Señor preparando mi corazón, preparando nuestra familia, preparando nuestras vidas, porque en, este, en medio de este desierto el Señor te habla, te habla, de una o de otra manera el Señor te habla. Amén. Y yo creo que... It's what it says in the book of Hosea 2.14. Thus I will bring you into the desert and speak to your heart. I believe that the Lord gave me this verse the day before I got infected with this virus. The Lord was preparing my heart preparing our family, preparing our lives, because in the middle of this desert, the Lord speaks to you. He speaks in one way or another, He speaks to you. Amen. Está orando y haciendo milagros. Y estamos agradecidos por todo lo que nuestros hermanos y amigos y familiares hicieron por nosotros, ¿verdad? En unos momentos tan difíciles de no poder salir, el traernos alimento, encontrarnos alimento, el de hacernos comida. Y fue algo muy hermoso el, el amor de Dios derramado sobre los corazones de ellos y compartiendo ese amor que tiene a Jesús a nosotros. He is working and he's done miracles. We're so thankful for all our brothers and sisters and friends and family did for us, especially in this time of great difficulty. We couldn't leave. And they brought us food, brought us groceries, and made us dinner. It was something so beautiful. The love of the Lord poured out in their hearts, and they shared this love that they have in Jesus with us. Yo aprendí a eso, o sea, el Señor me, me daba en medio de esta circunstancia. Veo, veo otra milla más. A veces caminamos, pero muy poco. 
Y Él no quiere que caminemos muy poco, Él quiere que nos extendamos más, que más podemos hacer eh, por nuestro hermano. Nosotros padecimos de esto, pero ¿qué más podemos hacer por aquellos que están tal vez para decir, ok, vamos, a... Dios lo dice, pero nunca se sabe. Amén, de esta circunstancia tan... I learned this, the Lord gave me in the middle of these circumstances to go another mile. Sometimes we walk too little, but the Lord doesn't want us to just walk a little. He wants us to stretch ourselves more. How much more can we do for our brothers and sisters? We were suffering with this. What more can we do for those who are suffering? Amen. Agradecemos a, a cada uno, los que nos cocinaron, a la tía Sandra, Doña Mari, aleluya, este, también Carlita, eh, muchas gracias a todas las pastoras y pastoras tan especiales, eh, tanta gente orando, textos que nos mandaban y era bastante la ayuda. Y tuvimos que rechazar algunas ayudas porque era bastante la ayuda que, que nos dieron. En these difficult circumstances, we declare that the Lord does great things and he continues to do the great things. We're thankful for everyone who cooked for us. Aunt Sandra, Doña María, also Carlita. Much thanks to the pastor's wife, especially for everyone's prayers and the text messages. It was so much help and we had to turn some of it away because we had so much help. Eh, hasta traer una pastilla la hermana Ana, Steven, el hermano Eric, que, que, verdad, que nos trajo el alimento a nuestro hogar, darle ese tiempo. Yo aprendí mucho de cada uno de mis hermanos y me quedo corto, el hermano Héctor, la hermana, eh, tantos hermanos que, que nos ayudaron, el hermano... Sister Ana was bringing us medicine. There was Stephen and Eric that were bringing food to our home. During this time, I've learned so much about my brothers and sisters. Oh yeah, and there's brother Hector. So many brothers and sisters who helped us. Juan, amen. Eh, gracias por esos textos, por esas oraciones. Si, si no mencioné Briana, Hannah, si no mencioné tu nombre, perdóname, perdónanos. Pero muchas gracias por lo que hicieron antes. El sobrino Joel es siempre orando por nosotros. Gracias, gracias por lo que hicieron en un momento tan difícil. And a brother Daniel, thank you for these texts and these prayers. I need to mention Brianna, Hannah. If I don't mention your name, forgive me, forgive us. But so much thanks for what you did. My nephew Joel for always praying for us. Thank you. I thank you for what you did in these moments that were so hard. Okay un proceso muy, muy, muy grandioso, lo llamo así porque podemos ver el mover de Dios, que Dios se mueve de diferentes maneras que no entendemos, no comprendemos, también a veces, en lo personal, yo tal vez en el momento más difícil de, eh, que estaba, llegué al momento de, de pensar que ya no iba a poder librarla, o que el Señor ya me iba a llevar, ¿verdad? porque sentí en ese momento que, que ya no podía más también porque ya no podía respirar bien I believe that it was a very great process seeing God move that God moves in different ways that we don't understand we don't comprehend sometimes personally maybe I in the most difficult moments I came to a point where I couldn't get rid of it And or I thought the Lord was going to take me because in that moment I felt that I couldn't do anything else. Amen. Because I couldn't even breathe. Amen. Pero ocurrió un milagro, un milagro esos que solamente Dios puede hacer, que no puede hacer el doctor, que no puede hacer eh, el amigo, que no puede hacer el familiar, solamente Dios. Amen. Y queremos transmitirte a ti que tal vez estés pasando por este momento difícil. Tómate de la mano de Dios. Agárrate de la mano de Dios, que no te va a soltar, Él no te va a dejar. Él proveerá de una otra manera. A ver si estás con problemas económicos, problemas de lo que sea, no estás pasando por este proceso de, o con este virus, a ver, ten fe, que el Señor te va a librar. But then 
there was a miracle, a miracle that only God could do, that the doctors couldn't do, that a friend couldn't do, that a family couldn't do, only God. Amen. And we want, we want to convey to you that you might be going through one of those moments that's so difficult. Take the hand of the Lord. Grab the hand of God. He's not going to let go of you. He's not going to leave you. He will prove it one way or another. Amen. If you have economic problems or any kind of problem, if you have this virus, have faith that God is going to free you. Porque Él no hace excepción de personas. Él tan solamente quiere que tú te acerques a Él, le busques, le entregues tu corazón a Él y que le digas, Señor, heme aquí, ya no quiero ser yo, más que seas tú en mí. Así de que queremos bendecirlos, queremos bendecirlos de, de, con este pequeño testimonio, saber de que hoy estamos de pie, hoy estamos bien. Amen. Just like He freed us, He's going to free you too. Because He does this for everyone. He just wants you to draw close to him and seek him and bring your heart to him and say to the Lord, here I am. I don't want to just be me. I want you to, to live and be in me. We want to bless you with this little testimony, letting you know that today we're here in faith and we're doing well. Hace dos días atrás no podía, yo no podía ni pararme, no podía caminar, no podía respirar. A mí me vomitaba sangre, pero el Señor me sanó. Señor me liberó y con un propósito, porque como todo tiene un propósito en Dios, eh, aquí estamos. Queremos bendecir a cada uno de los hermanos que, que nos ayudaron, nos apoyaron. Hemos aprendido en este desierto eh, muchas cosas, muchas cosas y, y queremos eh, servir de bendición. Amén para cada una de las personas que, que necesiten, necesiten amén eh, de lo que sea de nuestro apoyo. Lo que hemos aprendido en carne propia y lo que es la misericordia. Amén. La misericordia. It was day, there were days that I couldn't get up, couldn't walk, couldn't breathe, and I was vomiting blood. But the Lord healed me. He freed me and he has a purpose for me. We all have a purpose in God. And we're here wanting to bless every one of our brothers and sisters who helped and supported us. We have learned a lot of things in this desert. We want to serve. Be a blessing for everyone who needs some of our support. In our weakness, we have learned what his mercy is. Vale la pena seguir a Jesús. Confía. It's worth it to follow Jesus. Trust him. Adelante con el Señor Jesús. Hermanos, bendiciones. Amén. Y a ti que estás escuchando esto, busca al Señor. Amén. El Señor te va a levantar donde estés, donde te encuentres. Ten fe. El Señor está orando. En lo imposible, Él se manifiesta. Go forth in the Lord Jesus. Be blessed. Amen. Listen to the voice of the Lord. Amen. He's going to lift you up from where you are, from where you find yourself. Have faith. The Lord is working. He manifests himself in the impossible. God bless you. The Lord keep you. Blessings. Mayor es el que está con nosotros, que el que está en el mundo. Bendiciones. Saludes. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Blessings. Goodbye. Thank you, Jorge and Jamie. Thank you. Um, we need to be praying. You know, there's still some other families. Most of the Emmanuel Fellowship probably know that are still fighting this coronavirus. Uh, you know, taking food, offering to help whatever way is great, but the most important thing we can do is pray and uh, that God would just protect us, that he would even just teach us if we have to pass through a difficult time. And uh, um, again, thank you, Jorge and Jamie. Okay, we have been talking about who is Jesus for probably about the last six weeks or so. And in fact, uh, I think we have a diagram that we've been using and um, here it is, Jesus Christ, Son of God, and we've seen He's the Messiah, He's the bread of life, He's the resurrection, He's the life, He's the good shepherd, He's, he's love, He's the eternal Father. We've looked at all these things. In fact, last week we looked at Colossians 1, verses 19, or maybe verses 9 through 20, and we saw that Jesus is everything. And 
Today we want to build on that, really build on the last six weeks as we begin to speak of the unfathomable riches of Christ, the riches of his glory, the riches of his grace. And um, just a couple verses, Ephesians 3, verse 8. These are verses we've mentioned before. We're going to mention a lot more. To me, the very least of all saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unfathomable riches of Christ. And then again in Colossians 2, talking about Jesus, it says in verse 3, In whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And what is the Bible saying here? You know, uh, what are these riches of his glory? How do we walk in these? These are some of the things that we want to be talking about over the next few weeks. Okay, so now today we're going to look at Colossians 1, verses 25 through 29. And let's read verses 25 and 26. Uh, we really want to start in verse 26, but 25 is the first part of the uh, sentence, so we'll go there. Of this church I was made a minister according to the stewardship from God bestowed on me for your benefit, so that I might fully carry out the preaching of the Word of God. That is, the mystery of which has been hidden from the past ages and generations, but has now been manifested to his saints. The mystery. What, what, what's, a, what's a mystery? Probably most of us know. It's something we can't understand, right? We may have a few clues, but we can't seem to put it all together. It just doesn't make sense until perhaps the very end, then it all comes together. And everyone loves a good mystery, especially when it's all revealed. I know I've always loved mysteries. Even as a kid, my favorite books were probably mysteries. I love them. There's so many unexpected turns, things you couldn't understand, and all of a sudden, oh yeah, that makes sense now. Oh yeah, and that's why this person said this, and oh, and, and this event all of a sudden makes sense. Well, this is the mystery of the ages, the mystery hidden from past generations, past ages. You know, the Old Testament writings, they're beautiful, but at times they can be a little bit confusing, can't they? Because how, how do they all fit in? I mean, just think about it. You know, the Old Testament talks about how there's going to be a new covenant. And then it talks about how there's going to be a Messiah. A Messiah King that was going to deliver Israel. But then this Messiah was coming for all the nations too. Well, I, wait a minute, I thought it was for Israel to deliver them. And, uh, and then he was going to be a sacrifice, a sacrifice lamb for our sins. But then he was going to be a king also. Wait a minute, how, does, how do those two fit together? He was going to come in the flesh, but yet he was going to rule forever. How could that happen? How does it all fit together? And probably most important, how does all that affect me personally? Well, Colossians 1 says that this mystery, hidden for ages, hidden for generations, has now been, how does it say, manifested to his saints. Who are the saints? That's us. Everyone who's been genuinely born again. So this mystery is one that God has intended, he desires to reveal to us. It's not to remain a mystery. Okay, let's go into verse 27. To whom God willed to make known, he's talking about the saints, what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So this is God's will to make known to us, the saints, what are the riches of his glory, of this mystery. Because see, it says here, this mystery will lead us to the riches of his glory. And, and by the way, over the next several weeks, we're going to be seeing some of the same phrases come up over and over. The riches of his grace, the riches of his glory, the unfathomable riches of Christ. 
He wants us to understand these things. He wants us to know these things. You know? And by the way, we're not talking about physical riches. We're talking about something much more valuable. Something that is eternal. In Luke chapter 10, Jesus is talking to his disciples. He has sent them out to, uh, actually he had sent 70 of them out and uh, to preach and teach and to heal the sick. And, and they come back and they, they say, Lord, even the demons were subject to us in your name. And he basically says, well, that's great, but don't rejoice in that, that your spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven. And then verse 21, I think we have this up here. At that time, he rejoiced greatly in the Holy Spirit and said, I praise you, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for this was well-pleasing in your sight. He's, you know, Jesus is saying, I thank you, Lord, that you're revealing these to babes, you know. And uh, all things have been handed over to me by my Father. And no one knows who the Father is except the Father, who the Son is except for the Father, and who the Father is except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son reveals, wills to reveal him. Turning to his disciples, he said privately, Blessed are your eyes because of the things that they see. For I say to you that many prophets and kings wish to see the things which you see and did not see them, and to hear the things which you hear and did not hear them. Do you understand that? That this is God's purpose, that he would open our eyes, that we'd see things that even kings and the prophets of the Old Testament. It was still a mystery to them. But for us, now, under the New Covenant, this is not to be a mystery. And of course, it says, you know, that this is a, uh, how does it say it? It says um, that, that this mystery among the Gentiles. That's another way of saying the nations, isn't it? So it's not just the Jewish people. Yes, it's for Israel, but it's for all the world this revelation of this mystery. And what is this mystery? Very simply, it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. We sang that song this morning, didn't we? And, uh, and Jorge, who didn't even know what I was sharing about, he, you know, there at the end, he was kind of saying, yeah, it's, it's, it's Jesus being in me and living in me. That's right, amen. That's the mystery that has been long hidden, but has now been revealed to us. Christ in you. What does that mean? Well, who is Christ? Let's go back to that diagram that we kind of had once before. All these things we said that Jesus, and remember we kept saying, and Jesus is not only the resurrection of life, but he's the bread of life, and he's the word of God, and he's the wonderful counselor, and he's the prince of peace. That is who Christ is. And the mystery is that Christ all of him, and we didn't even get to finish, comes to live inside of us. That's right. That's the mystery. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, a verse that most of us know. It says, I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but what does it say? Christ lives in me. That's everything that Jesus is and was. And the life, that is the life, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who lived me, who loved me and gave himself up for me. This is what Jesus does when we become truly born again, when we open our hearts, Christ comes to live inside of us. Ephesians chapter 3. It says, um, uh, verse 17, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And then it goes on and says, and that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge 
that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. Do you get that? Christ dwelling in our hearts through faith. That's the mystery. And the result is what? That we'd be able to we'd be rooted and grounded in agape love. That we'd be able to comprehend with the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth. It sounds like the life of Jesus, doesn't it? And to know the love of Christ because he is love, which surpasses knowledge that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. That is God's plan. That's the mystery. Christ in me. I mean, how amazing is that? That the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the creator of all the earth and the heavens, that the Prince of Peace, that the Word of God, that the truth, the resurrection and the life, the living water lives inside of me. A weak, uh, uh, a weak person, human being. And he lives in you. That's the mystery. And all that we've talked about in these past weeks, and last week in particular, how the fullness of God came to be in and upon Christ. And now he, Jesus Christ, has chosen to live inside of me and live inside of you. If we could get a hold of this mystery, and I know it's something that we can say, yeah, yeah, I think I knew that, I knew that. But do we really know it? This is the mystery of all ages. The things that the prophets and kings longed to see, but they just couldn't figure it out exactly. And by the way, this is how God is going to accomplish his purposes here on earth. This is how the world's going to be transformed. How the bride's going to be prepared. Christ in you. Now, obviously, this is something that's supernatural. It cannot be explained. It cannot be understood in human reasoning, can it? I mean, think about it. How can a person be truly transformed? I mean, not just breaking habits, but truly transformed from the inside all the way out to the out. Going from a life of serving sin and self to a life living for Jesus. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's how. And by the way, if we go back to Galatians 2, 20, it says, But Christ lives in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live, how? By faith. And then Ephesians 3, 17, it says, According, um, no, it says, So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. When I walk in faith, in confidence, that he, that Christ, is in me, his life begins to fill my life. And he begins to overflow out of my life and start touching others. As we yield to him, as we deny ourselves, we are changed. He lives in us and he lives through us. He begins to use us for his glory. Something supernatural happens. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Let's read verse 28 and 29. And we proclaim him, admonishing every man and teaching every man with all wisdom so that we may present every man complete in Christ. For this purpose also I labor, striving according to his power, which works mightily, which mightily works within me. So, because Christ is in us, we proclaim Jesus. We proclaim Christ. We proclaim this message. Christ in you, the hope of glory. And we admonish every man and we teach every man with all wisdom. Why? That we may present every man, what? Complete in Christ. In other words, we want to see Jesus living inside of every person and living through every person. That's what it means to be complete in Him. To be full of Christ. That's our goal, our mission. If you go back to Galatians 3, 
verse 19. We've already read it twice here. But it says, And to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. His life filling me up. His life making me complete. That's our goal. Galatians 4, verse 19. I, I, I like this verse, and in a few weeks we're going to talk more about it. But it says, My children, Paul is talking to the Galatians, My children with whom I am in labor until Christ is formed in you. That's what we're talking about. You know, we're talking about Christ being formed in us. See, he begins to live inside of us when we open our hearts by faith and say, Jesus, I want to follow you. I see you're the son of God. I give you my life. Something supernaturally happens. He comes to live inside of us. But then as we yield to him, that is a process. And that's when Christ is being formed in us. And that is what, that's when we are complete in Christ. So it starts Christ in us, but then it makes it Christ is, we are complete in him. We are filled with him. Christ is formed inside of us. Because when Christ is formed inside of us, then we're filled with the fullness of Christ. Then we're complete in Christ. Then we're living and we're overflowing with his life. Verse 29, it says, For this purpose also I labor. What purpose is that? That I can present every man and every woman and teach every man that I might present, that we may present as a church, every man complete in Christ. For that purpose, we labor. We strive, it says, according to his power, not our own power, but to his power, which works mightily within us. Because that's not something we can do in the flesh, is it? It's his power working in us. You know, if you go back to Ephesians 3, verse 16, it says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. Oh, by the way, there, there's that phrase again, the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner man. And that word power in the Greek means, uh, well, it's actually, it's the word that we get the word dynamite from. It's explosive. It's powerful. It blows up things, you know. That's the power of God inside of us. That's what's working inside of us. And so we strive and labor to see every man complete in Christ. And we do so through his power mightily working in us. That's, that's what we're talking about. Christ in you, the hope of glory, the mystery which has been hidden for generations, for ages. This is the mystery that's been revealed to us. My desire is that Christ would be formed in me, that Christ would be formed in you. All of Christ, all the things we've been talking about. And it's our desire that Christ be formed in everybody else, that we, that they come to this living reality, that the mystery of it, that Christ is living in me and therefore I can do everything in Christ, right? Through his power, not me. That's what we're talking about. So next week, we're going to talk some more about this, okay? So it's uh, uh, this whole thing about Christ in you. This is so important. I want to take two weeks just because I really want us to understand this. So let's pray. Father, we ask that our eyes would be open to see these things. Lord, you said, Jesus, to your disciples, you know, blessed are your eyes. Lord, we want to have that blessing. And Lord, we know it's your will because you've said that. You know, you said, even there in verse 27, how did you say it? That uh, to whom God will to make known, you know, these things. Lord, this is your will. We ask that you would do it in my life yes. and in the lives of every person listening to this. 
that we would understand these things, that we would understand that Christ in me is the hope of glory. It's the thing that starts leading me to the riches of his glory, the riches of his grace, the unfathomable riches of Christ. All these things, Lord, that we talk about and we have a vague idea, but Lord, we don't want a vague idea. We want to know. We want it to be, we want it to be part of us. And Lord, that is your desire. So Lord, we thank you. We ask, Lord, that in the this week and the coming weeks that you would burn this inside of us, this reality, this mystery of Christ in us, the hope of glory. Amen. Amen. Okay. Well, listen, just a few announcements here. Um, first of all, we just want you to let us know if you're watching. And if you happen to have any prayer requests, um, oh, uh, Sorry. No. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. I, I'm switching the order here. You know, send us a message, okay, just there on Facebook. If you have a prayer request, if you'd like some more information about our Zoom Bible studies, if you'd like to w join us for one of our Zoom prayer meetings, if you'd just like to know more about Jesus and how this can become a reality, we, will, we would love to start a community, you know, a conversation with you because these things are very important. And we realize that there's many of you are watching this that aren't part of our normal Sunday morning gathering way back when, a couple months ago. And, uh, and we appreciate you. We're glad that you're joining in. And, uh, and we, we thank God for you. But we want to be there for you. Okay? So, uh, so uh, house churches, you know, we do have them throughout the week. We're going through a study book, Becoming a House of Prayer for All the Nations. So again, if you'd like to join us, please give us a call, write us, we'll get back in touch with you. Okay, and is, I think there's another announcement. Oh yes, the church app. We are in the process of revamping the, the app, and it's going to be able to do a lot more than it used to be. Uh, you know, as far as notifications and everything, but we encourage you to do this. And by the way, giving is a, a great way to do that is through our app. It's very simple. You can set it up in probably minute, two minutes. And then after that, you can, it takes, uh, if it takes 20 seconds, you're, you're being distracted somehow to go ahead and just to kind of give on a regular basis or something. Uh, if you prefer not to do this, you know, you can send a check to us, you know, uh, uh, box uh, 4964, Frisco, Colorado, 80443, or what many people are doing, they're dropping uh, their, their tithes, offerings by our house and just putting it in the mailbox, you know, outside. And so all those are ways that you can do that. Um, we are... We decided, I don't know about you, but I just like to be able to kind of say personally, Happy Mother's Day to a lot of people. And I just like to be able to, to see some people. So what we're going to do is we're going to sign off in a few minutes and then we invite you to join us for not a long time, maybe 15, 20 minutes by Zoom. And I believe that you have on the Facebook a Zoom um, invitation or you will here in the next minute or so and uh, just do that and that way I know there may be a lot of us there but we can at least say, say hello hey how are you doing you know hey Jorge Jamie really appreciated your testimony uh, uh, and in other words kind of give us a little bit time of fellowship okay so we're going to do that in just a few minutes but I think before we do that we have something else we'd like to say to all the moms I think it's coming up here real quick.
happy Mother's Day, all you moms. And, uh, and probably within about a minute, you're going to have a Zoom invitation if you want to join us. On Facebook. It, that would be on Facebook. Okay, that's where the Zoom invitation will be.